Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Relationship Sessions with Sissy. Today we have a wonderful special guest, my cousin, Miss Wanda Curry. Um, she is the Community Center District uh, Manager for Greenville County Hearts Recreation and Tourism Center. As well, an interesting fact, um, she was the first African-American as well as the first woman to direct um, Hart County Recreation Department. So um, I just want to throw that out there. Wanda, thank you so much for um, being on this channel and um, willing to kind of share some insight on um, your take on how, why you feel like establishing and maintaining relationships are important while in college. So thank you so much. It's an honor to have you. You are welcome. I'm glad to be here, Sissy. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, here we go. Miss Wanda, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Maybe where you graduated from, your highest level of education, um, what, what do you go to school for? Just some fun stuff about Miss Wanda. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so, again, I'm LaWanda Curry. I am... Uh, fun fact, I will be 48 in September. Hey! hey look at <laughs> Hope I don't look it. Um, but I am my mother's only child, and I am not spoiled, though. That's unique. Um, <laughs> of course, I grew up in Hartwell, Georgia. I'm a Georgia peach southerner through and through. Uh, hey. you can hear it in, <laughs> look, I'm sure they can hear it in my accent. Um, but I graduated with a Bachelor of Science um, in Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Management from, guess where? Clemson University. <laughs> go Tigers. Go Tiger guys. <laughs> Whatever. Go Tigers. Um, but that's where I, I graduated. I've graduated from, uh, and my degree is in recreation, as you've already mentioned. I'm currently at Greenville County. Uh, Parks, Recreation, and Tourism in Greenville, South Carolina. I've been here for a little over nine years. Prior to that, I was in my hometown of Hartwell with that recreation department. And prior to that, I spent seven years with the city of Rock Hill, Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. So I've been in this recreation game for a pretty long time and know a little bit about relationships in terms of professionally. All right. All right. <laughs> Shout out to Rock Hill. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, Miss Wanda. Um, so just a little going a little, a little deeper. How does your Christ, how does Christ or your faith play a role in who you are today? Um, pretty much it's everything of who I am. I'm of the generation, and I'm old enough now. I start using I'm of the generation um, where, of course, there was not a choice. I went to Sunday school. I went to vacation Bible school. Um, I went to Wednesday night prayer meeting. I was in church every Sunday. Um, I was on the youth choir. I was ushering. I was, you know, I was made to be in the church. Um, but at the same time, it was still fun enough. I had other friends there. It was that social skill. So you didn't feel like you were truly forced to be in church. So um, I was able to learn and get grounded in my faith, in my religion with Christ, in my relationship with Christ. And so over the years, when you have that foundation, that true foundation, you never lose it. Now you may stray, you may fall off the cliff a couple times, but you can always start back over because you have that true foundation. And it shows today because when I speak, when I do anything, people know that there's Christ in me and they can see it uh, here at work. I am, um, I am the person, the power of prayer, I guess, because when we have meals and things, uh, meetings, I'm always asked to pray because they know that's who I am. Uh, I even have a prayer jar at my desk um, and people know it's here. I don't look at what they put in it, but they know if they put anything in the drawer um, jar that I'm always praying for them. So I think wow. I'm letting Christ show through me by my actions. So you have to remember, you have to have actions, not just he's in there. And so that's the way I do it. And it, and it is powerful. People feel confident in you. They, they trust you. Um, yes. And that's how Christ has played a role in me building those relationships, building that trust with people I interact with. That's good. And we can see it. Your glow says it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, Wanda. Yay. That's good. Mm. 
Okay, could you tell us a little bit about your college experience and or how you navigated through college? So a lot of people probably don't know this, but I'm very shy. So on every Friday and Saturday night, I was in the library. <laughs> really? No, girl, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was, I, I'm going to tell you, I love college and that's why I've been a big proponent of everybody should try to, I know it's not for everybody, but if you can, you should try to have that experience. Um, I loved it. I, I have lifelong friends, of course, from, from Clemson, but, um, getting out in college because a college is built like the world. There are so many different types of people, so many ways to interact and learn about the diversity of the world. Um, and so again, with me, it was a little bit easier for me because I was on the band. So yes, I was a member of Tiger Band okay. uh, for a number of years. I was even drum major. Uh, so that automatically put me in a leadership role. And so mm -hmm. that made me more visible, made me have the more, have more opportunities to get to know people and have mm -hmm. great experiences. But of course, I won't lie to people. I was, you know, Friday and Saturday night, if there was a party, you know, I was with a group of friends. We were out partying and yeah. having a good time. But that to me is still part of the college experience. Right. You get to experience the good, bad, and different of life Absolutely. so that you can come to your true self and know that that's not the path I want to stay on. That's the path yes. I you know. That's that youth. Let that go. Now get yes. on. Yes. So, yes. Um, so yes, my college experience at Clemson was amazing. That's good. That's good because oftentimes it's just like you go to college and it's just like you have to stay in the books and all this other stuff, which is which is part of being in college. But you also that's you you start to find out who you are and the what you like to do and different things like that. So if you don't go out, you don't try these other things or you don't do these other things. You you don't know that that's something that that's a no go for you. Right. So I, oh, yeah. I feel like, you know, that's all part of the college experience, like you said. And, and you know, you, you meet other people and, and they may become lifelong friends and possibly um, assist you with other, you know, opportunities, career opportunities or or different things of that. So that's good. <laughs> okay. I just I just wanted to say what you were saying. I equate college to almost like the junior high middle school years you know you've left ever elementary that youthfulness um you're not in high school when you're quite grown so middle school you're trying to find yourself i think that's what college is you've left your parents house before you become a true adult you got to kind of find yourself and college helps you do that those experiences help you do that that's a good analogy i never looked at it like that that's good <laughs> now now with that do you um did you establish any relationships while in college that helped you with your career, whether professionally or socially? Um, socially, yes. Because again, I still have those friends, those lifelong friends I've made. We go on trips together. You know, I've been there for births. I've been there for marriages, been in weddings, all that socialness and connectivity. Um, but more importantly, professionally, yes. Because I developed, once I got into my core of recreation, I did, I, I created great relationships with my professors, my uh, advisor, you know, mm. because those are the people who they're already been in the field or something. Mm -hmm. So they know the people who are going to have jobs opening. Yeah. And that's exactly how I got my first job. My mm. advisor knew of a job opening and she immediately called on my behalf and said, I've got this great girl graduating. You need to come talk to her. So that's because I developed a good relationship. And, you know, some people, it's like, you got an advisor, they're just there, and they never go see them until it's necessary or something. No, I saw my advisor a lot. I, I yeah. kept in contact with her. So right. and, and it led to, again, me having, I was one of few people in my immediate circle um, that I had a job. Yes, I had a job before I graduated. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to wait and go look for one. I knew the day I walked across that stage, I already had a job. That's something waiting for you. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, that was good. very important. That's good. Yeah, because oftentimes, yeah, you, like you said, you only go to your advisors like, listen, 
I don't know what's going on. Like they say, I'm supposed to graduate this particular time. It's like, you know, you only see them just a couple of times out of the year opposed to just having that consistent relationship where, you know, like you said, hey, um, they had an opportunity. They knew somebody that, you know, that, that had an opportunity for you. So I think that's very important. Good. Nice. Nice. Um, so now why do you feel establishing and maintaining relationships are important while in college and even throughout your adulthood? Why do you feel like, you know, that, that's that important, the, the importance of, um, establishing, maintaining those relationships are, um, are I mean, just that important. Cause human nature is, we were not ever destined to be alone. We were all, mm -hmm. we're, we were always designed to be social creatures, to help each other, to be part of a community. Um, and so you can't do that alone. You have to get out. You have to build relationships. You have to get to know people. Um, and again, while you're doing that, getting to know people, you find yourself. Um, mm. You determine who you are and what you like. And you know um, what those experiences bring to you just creates the person you're destined to be. So, yes, building relationships, um, especially while you're in college, um, because it's so easier. Sometimes once you become an adult um, and you're setting your ways and you've got your family and you've got this, it's hard to get to know people except for maybe at work. At college, you have every opportunity again to get to know so many different types of people. So college is absolutely the place to expand your horizon and build relationships or at least work on your social skills right. to build relationships with long-term people. So Absolutely. That's why I believe it's important. Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you. You are so on point when you state that because you that's that's like you said, that's the time to kind of find out like what's going on with these people and all this other type of stuff. So I I, I I I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Um now now with that though, what advice could you give college students um and or young adults on building professional relationships? Um, one, as I know, everybody knows this, you got to come outside your comfort zone. Um, you've got to develop, uh, good communication skills. Um, so if you're not comfortable talking to people, you're going to have to, I mean, you may have to read up, study, whatever, but you've got to get involved in something. Um, it's sort of what I tell the high school students when I talk to them join any kind of club, join something so that that helps build your confidence to keep talking to people and get in a group. Um, so in college, it's the same thing. Like I said, I was a member of Tiger Band. Uh, I know I have several friends that joined sororities and fraternities, um, but you've got to belong to something in yeah. order to build those relationships. Because if you're not part of something, then you're going to be more isolated. You're not going to join groups. You're not going to be part of a community and you're not going to see, it's going to be harder for you to succeed. Um, yeah. So I do, I would encourage college students um, and young adults, once you get in the real world, there are professional societies. Mm -hmm. Get involved in those types of things that keep you connected to people. Yeah, I, I, th I think there's a maybe something called meetup.com or something where there's different groups. Don't quote me on that, the website, but there's different um, organization or, or different groups that you could be a part of just to kind of, you know, like if it's IT, there's an IT group that you could kind of link up with or recreational. There's different groups that you could kind of link up with that, that you kind of bond with that you can kind of like, you know, relate to and kind of expand from there. I mean, that's an, always an option if the college is, you know, if you're a little out of that, that yeah. realm there, but and um, if they if they try, um, um, once you get into the working world, most um, chamber of commerces have some kind of junior professional mm -hmm. group. So I would start there. Um, if you have a local United Way, which is about giving back to the city or community you're living, most of them have like a young professional group. Um, okay. So it's not like it's already established and it's a certain type of people. No, you can easily join it and get to know people. So like you said, search out some of those types of groups. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be in your field that you have right. to align with, but just those young professional groups. They're usually located all over any kind of city or county mm -hmm. that you're a part of. Okay, good. Nice advice. Good advice. 
Okay. Now, how difficult, if at all, um, was it to leave home and uh, start your college journey? Um, oh, I left my prop. Okay. Can you see this? Can you see this? Yes. Okay. Pretend this is a car. This is me leaving Hartwell to go to college. Zoom! <laughs> <laughs> Wasting no time. I'm full, I mean, I know, I know a lot of students. It is hard yes. to leave your family, leave your, leave everything you've been so comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, I was not that person. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, but again, I feel like the reason it was so easy for me uh, is because, again, starting from junior high, well, actually starting in elementary, excuse me, go on back to church. By being involved in church, you know, I got to go to some little youth conferences. I was a part of 4-H. I got to go to summer camp. Um, I joined the band, of course, when I was in junior high and high. So I was in clubs. I was in national honors. So I was involved and engaged, and I was learning about expanding my horizon. Right. So when it came time that I had a chance to go expand it, I was ready. Was ready to do that, But yeah. some, some, some people get so stuck and comfortable in their town and their family, they're so scared because they've never tried anything. So that's why I really encourage college students, you know, if you finally take that chain to get to college, get involved to keep going. If you're a high school student, get involved so when you have that opportunity to leave home, you're not so scared, you're not so nervous. It's gonna be okay. That's so, good. So um, I, I know you uh, you said that you were in band in high school, right? Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. think that, do you think like um, being a part of any type of sports organization that would kind of oh. help you venture out and, and start that, take that leap to go to college? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I use band because that's me. But whether mm -hmm. you're an athlete, whether you're on any kind of academic teams, it, it doesn't matter what you participate in, but participate in something. Um, I encourage people, if you are athletic, I was not athletically inclined, um, to, yes, pursue that if that's your passion. For me, again, once I joined band, that was, that's what I loved. Uh, and it kept getting me further and further. So, um, that's good. but yeah, that's and good. athletics is, is, is a stepping stone as well. Okay, okay. And, and leading uh, into this, this next question. Now, um, I know that you stated that maybe being a part of, you know, um, different sports or academic um, team, um, what other advice could you give those who are hesitant on making a, a move as big as leaving their comfort zone um, to start a new journey, whether for career, new job, um, going to college, or just getting a fresh start in a new location? Like, what other advice could you give them to just, hey, just do it. You can do it. Like, kind of like Nike, just do it. Like, what, 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 I mean, what can you... What can you give for that? My, my advice to them is, one, um, seek out. I know they know somebody in their family mm -hmm. already, their neighborhood, mm -hmm. who has done it. Mm -hmm. Seek those people out because, you know, they may not know me. Um, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, she's just saying that. That sounds good. Well, no. Then if you're not comfortable listening to me, there is somebody in your life that has made it, that did take that first step of it not so go find out how they did it because they came from where you came from and you're more comfortable understand yeah i could do it too mm -hmm. um so i do encourage you seek that will be my advice seek out somebody you do know and that you're comfortable with because they can tell you the same thing i'm telling you but you'll receive it better because you already have that connection to that yes, person yes 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 you better stop playing with them, Wanda. You <laughs> <laughs> crazy, girl. Uh, um, all right. Um, you are really connected with the youth. And as you speak, you, as you spoke, you, you're basically saying, you know, even when you talk to high school students and, and that sort of thing, um, you could tell you, your connection with the youth. Um, why is that so important to you, to have that connection with the youth? Um, because... So my purpose in life, God designed me to be in recreation. Um, and I tell everybody that that's how I always start speeches is this is my God given talent, my God given gift. Um, and with that though, 
everything has seasons, reasons, progression. And so you always got to start with the youth because they become the adults in your programs. They mm -hmm. become the seniors in your program. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I've always felt that connection to youth because um, I feel like that's where God really wanted me to uh, connect with um, I think because he designed me sometimes as adult you you know we can be we don't mean to be but sometimes we can be hard on kids mm -hmm. um, you know yeah you should have known better and you know I think because I don't have kids um, I connect sometimes with youth especially my friends kids because I can um, but is it sympathize with them I've been mm -hmm. a child I've never been a parent but right. I've been a child Oh, so that's good. I don't, I don't come at them as their traditional adult. You need to do this. Yeah. That's not, yeah. you know, I come yeah. at them talking to them more on their level, but with the understanding that I'm an adult now. I'm not your friend. Yeah, <laughs> right. <an> adult <laughs> right, right. In the right way. So I think that's why it's important for me personally to connect to you because I do listen more than sometimes a standard, uh, a parent adult would. Right. Um, so that, that, that's my, my calling of why. Um, I feel like it's very important to stay connected to them because they do need that. They need always need structure. I will always tell them you need rules, regulations, but they also need that listening ear and that support, that blind support of if you believe it, at least try it. Step outside. Sometimes parents, especially in the world we live now, parents are very hesitant to even encourage their children yes. to try new things. Yes. Because they're so terrified of what's going to happen when they're turned down. What's going to, I mean, some days it's a life or death decision. I mean, you turn on the news, you know what's in the news. So I understand the fear of parents. But at the same time, if children don't learn to experience, then you never grow up to grow into the person you're supposed to be. That is good stuff, man. That is, I couldn't agree more. I know, you know, um, like growing up, I, I, I've noticed that you were really connected with us, some of us. And even now, looking back, of, back at it, it's like those kids are now in college or beyond college. And it's just to know that you had a hand in that. I could see, I could see that relation, right? That relationship. So, I, and even with me, you know, I'm like, Mama, can you ask a woman such and such? You know, so I appreciate you being that ear for the youth. Um, because like you said, we all need that. And, and you was once there. So being that you were there at that, at that point, once, once a time in your life, you can relate to them. So I really appreciate you being that person. For all of us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I just need to correct you. Some of those students now are married with kids. Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> They're married with degrees and everything. So, yeah, exactly. but, but you had a hand in that. So, I do, you know. and I appreciate that every, you know, sometimes God knows best. There are days that are trying and you know when you work for entities and there are certain rules and guidelines that may restrict what you really want to do or you it just feels overwhelming some days it's in those moments I get a message from a former student that says you know thank you I you know mm -hmm. I'm doing this this and this and I appreciate you pushing me and that's when I keep going yes. God always sends those those former students to me so I, I can I, I relate to teachers in that, um, that per when those students grow up, you know, I have them after school, teachers have them during, but I feel that love that they always come back and say, thank you. Mm, so that's, that's why I keep, I keep trying to stay connected to the youth. <laughs> right, right. That's good. That is so good. Um, now with that, what are some of the challenges that you faced um, while assisting the youth um, and building your brand or business? Um, Ooh, that's a tough one right there. That was the one that was stumping me. Um, some of the some of the challenges are um, for me in terms of I'll say public parks and recreation. Um, you know, funding over the years, um, as as well as the schools. But the funding when there are issues with funding and there have to be budget cuts, mm -hmm. like any business. Um, you know, we're the wellness people, we're the feel good people in terms of recreation. So there's always that thought that, oh, we can cut that. 
Um, and so that's still a huge challenge now uh, in terms of where government entities, tax receipts, all that background noise stuff does. So I consistently have to um, monitor that because some of the facilities that I supervise we serve in very low economic areas mm. um and so of course these families can't afford truly the services we provide so we have to scholarship um find creative ways um but when we've even gotten to that point and we still have to have a minute fee you know if a parent goes well you know it's okay i'll just leave them at home then that child is suffering out there so that's still a challenge um when it builds around budgeting um, the other thing is for me staying relevant, um, mm -hmm. I am not very technology based and tech savvy. Um, so, you know, these kids all know how to TikTok and do all this stuff. Yes. <laughs> so to stay connected to them, you know, I've got to stay refreshed and learn all these things. And that's a challenge when you get to a certain age, I'm starting to get where I don't want to know that. Yes. <laughs> but, but and that's a challenge but what i've done like my staff and i we've been taking classes we took some classes about some things that were electronic based for us to learn so we could connect especially to our teenagers um so that that that's been a challenge to face and then just overall what everybody does the stuff that's in society keeping these kids motivated when they can turn on the news and see there are a lot of things out there telling them there's no hope right and we right. have to combat that every day because it seems like every day there's a whole lot more hours of negativity thrown at them Absolutely. than the positivity we can throw at them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so that's kind of what was flowing around my head when I thought about challenges. Okay. All right. That's, those, are, those are challenges that can be a bit consuming. So, um, now, um, if you had, if you could have a do-over, what would you change, or or would you change anything about your journey? Um, I would have married rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Honestly, um, that one right there, it wasn't hard, but it just, it sent a lot of things in my head. Like I'd started looking at my whole life. Um, but honestly, I've said this in, in several speeches I've done. I wouldn't do anything over because if I change one little thing, it would alter who I would have become today. And I can sit here and tell you right now, I'm extremely happy at the person God has created today. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm where he wants me to be, needs to be. I'm, I'm still falling short and there are things mm -hmm. I need to work on. But as a whole, this is where God needed me to be, wanted me to be. And I had to go through those hoops, those trials, those tribulations, all of that stuff to get to this point. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would not, other than potentially marrying Rich. <laughs> No, I would not. I wouldn't do my life over. Yeah. That is great stuff. Wanda, you have been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time out to speak with us and, and just give us some information that we could really use. Um, I know it's beneficial to me, so um, hopefully it was beneficial to you guys. If so, you know the drill. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to this channel and video. Um, also, I would like to give a birthday shout out to my mommy. Happy birthday, mommy. Happy birthday, Auntie. I hope you have, help you have many more. Um, you guys stay blessed and have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Wanda, thanks again. I love you so much. I really appreciate I you. you and I think you're doing amazing things. I, 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 I really applaud, you, applaud that. So. Thank All you. right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.